Here's our third definition for the trigonometric functions, that it involves the unit circle. Now I've drawn the unit circle over here on a coordinate system. The, the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. It has a radius of 1, that's why the coordinates of this point are x equal 1, y equals 0. Now if I start at 1, 0 and I move t units along the circumference of the unit circle to, and end at any point whatsoever x, y, then here are the definitions for the trigonometric functions. The sine of t, that is the sine of this arc length here, t, is equal to y. So that y coordinate is the sine of this arc length t. The cosine of t is equal to x, and the tangent of t is y divided by x. So you can see tangent of t is still sine t over cosine t. Now, I've, and the definitions for cosecant, secant, and cotangent are uh, such that I can get these reciprocal identities out that I've had before. So cosecant is 1 over y, secant is 1 over x, cotangent is x over y. So these are new definitions for the trigonometric functions. It's our third definition, and it involves the unit circle. Now, t is not an angle here. It's real number measure. It's a length along the circumference of the unit circle starting at 1, 0 and ending at the point x, y. If I'm on the unit circle then, the coordinates of any point on the unit circle are cosine t and sine t. Now what I want to do is take a close-up shot of this and see if we can go back and draw in um, a diagram so we can get our original definition 1 for the six trigonometric functions back. So suppose I draw in this angle in standard position here, theta, angle theta. Now theta in radians is going to be the arc length t divided by the radius of the circle, which is 1. So theta and t are exactly the same thing. That is, the radian measure for angle theta and this arc length here, t, are exactly the same. So you can even think of t as being angle measure. Now let's go back to our original definition one for the trigonometric functions and find the sine of theta. Let's have a close-up here. So the sine of angle theta, well, theta is in standard position here. So all I need is a point on the terminal side. Well, x, y is on the terminal side. The sine of theta is the y coordinate divided by the radius, which is 1. That just comes out to be y. So you see that sine theta is equal to y, whether I use my definition 1 or this definition 3 that I just wrote. Now let me go back to this diagram and see if we can't draw something in and see what, what we can get for the sine of theta using definition 2. I'm going to draw in a vertical line right here so I get a little right triangle. So here's my right triangle. Here's angle theta. It's an acute angle in this right triangle. The length of this side is x, and the length of this side is y if this is the point x, y. Now I use definition 2 to find the sine of theta. The sine of theta, using definition number 2, will be the side opposite, which is y, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1, so I end up again with y. So the sine of theta is equal to y no matter whether I use definition 1, definition 2, or this new third definition. So three different ways to define the trigonometric functions. All of them are consistent with each other. And one works well if we have the point on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. The, other, the second definition works well if we're working with right triangles. And this third definition works well if we're on the unit circle and gives us a way to have a real number measure for angles here. I can think of finding the sine, cosine, and tangent of an actual real number length right here. So as you'll see as we progress through the course, uh, these three different definitions come into play in different situations. Let's go to the board now and look at our first problem. Okay, we want to use the unit circle to do a little bit of work with the trig function, so let's zoom in on it here and see what we can do. You can see the way this unit circle is set up here, that when I get to this point on the unit circle, which is the intersection of the angle 30 degrees, the terminal side of it in standard position with the unit circle, that the ordered pair for the, the coordinates of that point are square root 3 over 2 and 1 half. That means that cosine of 30 is this number and the sine of 30 is this number. So all these ordered pairs as we go around the unit circle are the cosine and sine of these angles for these points of intersection here. So let's see if we can use this unit circle to find the sine of 30 degrees. Well, all I need to do is go up to the angle that says 30 degrees right here and look at the ordered pair. The first number is the cosine, the second number is the sine. So if I want the sine of 30 degrees or the sine of pi over 6, I can look on the unit circle and see that that's just 1 half. 
Now, how about the tangent of 5 pi over 6? Well, tangent 5 pi over 6, I can write as sine 5 pi over 6 divided by cosine of 5 pi over 6. Then, all I need to do is go around this unit circle here until I find 5 pi over 6, which is right here. It's that angle. 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6 are the same thing. And I look at the two ordered pairs. The cosine must be negative square root 3 over 2, and the sine is 1 half. So I'll write a 1 half for the sine and a negative square root 3 over 2 for the cosine. And then when I simplify this fraction, I just end up with negative 1 over square root 3. And that's what I get for the tangent of 5 pi over 6. Next, I want to find theta if cosine theta is negative square root 3 over 2. And I want to use this unit circle to do that. So I know that my ordered pairs uh, around the unit circle here, the x-coordinate is cosine, the y-coordinate is sine. So I just need to look and see where I have ordered pairs in which the first coordinate is negative square root 3 over 2. So I'll go around the unit circle, and I'll look. Here's 1, negative square root 3 over 2. Come down here, here's another one, negative square root 3 over 2, and that's it. And I know that cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 4, so that's where I expect to find those numbers. So just by looking on the unit circle and looking for a point whose x-coordinate is negative square root 3 over 2, I find out that theta must be equal to 150 degrees, whoops, 150 degrees, which is the same as 5 pi over 6, or theta is equal to, okay, the other one was 7 pi over 6, or 210 degrees, 210 degrees, or 7 pi over 6. So. That's how I use the um, unit circle right here to find theta if I know one of the trig functions of theta. In this case, cosine theta, negative square root 3 over 2. I look for first coordinates that are negative square root 3 over 2, and then I write down the angles uh, associated with those. Okay, let's uh, try some other problems here using the unit circle. Okay, I know it's kind of hard to see this unit circle here on the board, but you know it is in the book, so you can look back there in the book and, and kind of follow along with this. But I want to find the sine of 11 pi over 6 using this unit circle. So I'm going to go around the unit circle until I find the angle 11 pi over 6. That happens to be right here, and the coordinates are square root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Well, that's the cosine and the sine. So the sine must be negative 1 half. Then I'll look for the cosine of 11 pi over 6, and it happens to be square root 3 over 2. Now, what about tangent? Well, to find the tangent, what I'm going to do is use the fact that tangent is sine over cosine. So tangent of 11 pi over 6 is going to be sine 11 pi over 6 over cosine 11 pi over 6. So I'll just do it this way, negative 1 half divided by square root 3 over 2 and that comes out to be negative 1 over square root 3. So I use my um, ratio identity that the tangent is uh, sine over cosine to get negative 1 over square root 3 over 2. Now what about cotangent? Well, cotangent's the reciprocal of tangent. So if I have the tangent, I have the cotangent. So I'll just simply take the reciprocal of this and get negative square root 3. Same thing for secant. Secant of 11 pi over 6 is going to be the reciprocal of the cosine. Well, the cosine is square root 3 over 2, so the secant must be 2 over square root 3. And then cosecant, my last one down here, well, it's going to be the reciprocal of sine, and the sine is negative 1 half, so its reciprocal is negative 2. Okay, so that's a look at using the unit circle to find a variety, work a variety of problems involving the trig functions. Um, it's not that you have to memorize that unit circle, but by working with it more and more, you'll become more familiar with those angles, the relationship between degrees and radians, and then the sine and cosine of those angles. Okay, uh, let's suppose that we have an angle theta and that it intersects the unit circle at the point 1 over square root 5 and negative 2 over square root 5. So this is the unit circle. It goes to the point 1, 0 on the x-axis there, and it goes to the point 0, 1 on the y-axis. So we have some angle theta. It intersects the unit circle at this point, 1 over square root 5 and negative 2 over square root 5. 
which I've done just approximations to just so I could draw the picture, 0.4 and about negative 0.9. Okay, what are sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle? Well, the sine of this angle, remember the ordered pairs in the unit circle go cosine, sine, so this is negative 2 over square root 5. Cosine is going to be 1 over square root 5. And tangent is going to be sine over cosine, so negative 2. So when I know where a, an angle intersects the unit circle, if I have the coordinates of that point, finding sine, cosine, and tangent, very easy. Let's look at another problem. Okay, next we want to identify the argument for this function. So it's a tangent function, and the argument is what's inside the parentheses. So this right here is the argument of that function. So it's a tangent function, this is the argument, and if we had a value of x to substitute in here, we could find out what this is and then evaluate that function for this value that's inside the parentheses called the argument. So in general, when you're talking about the argument of the function, if we were using function notation, here f is the function, the argument is what's inside the parentheses, in this case x. But whatever it is, even if it was x squared plus 5 or 2x minus 1, whatever's inside the parentheses, that's the argument of the function. It's the thing that the function operates on. Let's look at another problem. All right, here we have the unit circle again, and I want to use the unit circle to find what is the sine of 2 pi plus pi over 2. Well, 2 pi is once around the unit circle. So if I want to find this angle right here, I can start at the point 1, 0, go once around the unit circle, that's 2 pi units, then go another pi over 2 units, so that's going to bring me up here. So it turns out that the sine of 2 pi plus pi over 2 will be the same as just the sine of pi over 2, because 2 pi plus pi over 2 and pi over 2 are coterminal. So if I look at just pi over 2 right here, that's 90 degrees, or that arc length right there, I end up at the point 0, 1, and remember that's cosine and sine of that angle right there. So in this case, the sine of that is going to be the number 1. So the sine of 2 pi plus pi over 2 and the sine of pi over 2 exactly the same thing. It's the number 1, and you can kind of visualize it by going once around the unit circle. That's 2 pi units. Then another pi over 2 unit, you end up right here. Either way you look at it, whether you look at it as pi over 2 or 2 pi plus pi over 2, you end up at the same place. Okay, so I want to know if each of these statements is possible. Let's start with the most obvious one. Sine of z is equal to 1.2. Is there a number z or an angle z that I could put in here so that its sine came out 1.2? Nope, it can't happen. The sine function is always ends up between negative 1 and 1. No matter what angle I put in here for the argument and take the sine of that, it always comes out between negative 1 and 1. It can never be 1.2. So, nope. No value of z for that. How about cosine of pi is equal to z? Well, cosine of pi, if I was to look on the unit circle or whatever I wanted to do, I would find out that the cosine of pi was negative 1. So z equal negative 1, that will work for that, because cosine of pi is negative 1. Now how about this, secant of pi over 2? Well, secant of pi over 2 is going to be the reciprocal of cosine of pi over 2. Secant and cosine are reciprocal. So cosine of pi over 2, if you go on the unit circle and look at that, what do you get? 0. So cosine pi over 2 is 0. 1 over 0, undefined. So no, there's no value of z for which that will make this true because secant of pi over 2 is simply undefined. There is no value for it. So sometimes these things will come up from time to time and it will be very helpful for you to know, for instance, that Sine and cosine, those two functions are always between negative 1 and 1. So if I get a number like 1.2, I know I've made a mistake somewhere, or negative 3, those things are impossible. Sine and cosine always have to be between negative 1 and 1. Anyways, there's a look at some problems involving the unit circle and some values of the trig functions.